summer chat or spiritual Q&A. Today, we're located in this beautiful water, and that's going to be the focus of our convo today, is talking about how water affects us and light and energy. So to kick it all off, how do we connect with our inner light? To connect with your inner light, you need to do homework. And homework can look like many, many things. For some people, it's going to be running, yoga, doing an activity like, like cooking, and you know, meditation, obviously. So for some people, it's going to be praying. To connect with your inner light means basically knowing yourself and knowing how you function. To connect to it, the best thing is to be in a place like this, or in a quiet place, or in a place that makes you feel free because your light is highly related to freedom and your free will and your power. And in moments like this, when we can flow, this is where we are in our power. So how do we nurture our light? To nurture your light, and that's going to be a, a big theme, you're going to have to do the things that help it. And to help it, basically, you have to learn, you have to grow, you have to take care of yourself. You have to do all the things that may be hard actually to do on the day-to-day -day basis. For some people, it's going to be morning ritual. It's going to be eating healthy. It's going to be doing enough sport. Because your light is an integral part of you. So your light cannot be shining the brightest if you don't take care of the other aspects. It's a singular unit. You are a singular unit. Mind, body, spirit. So to take care of your life means taking care of you. And because it's more of an abstract concept, I'm going to be back again to knowing what brings you joy. You know, maybe it's going for a walk at night. Maybe it's sitting by a tree. Maybe it's sitting in a river. Sitting in a river. And maybe it's just listening to some music, you know, playing a specific video game or something. Even potentially watching TV. It, it, what matters is the context around it, you know. If you're watching TV to avoid doing something, well, that's not good. If there is that one show or that one documentary that really brings you joy, you know, like, or that one movie, and you're like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to treat myself, I'm going to watch it. Well, that's one of the things that helps you treat yourself. So we're out here around the four main elements. So what's the relationship between us and Elements. So the elements, basically, you know, when you look at nature, there are some of the basic building blocks of nature. So we know that if you go lower, you have molecular structure and you have atomic structure. But when it comes to the elements, we can actually see. Because we know atoms are there in part of us, but we can't see them, you know, with our eyes. And we cannot experience them. But we can experience heat, we can experience wind, we can experience water, and we can experience earth. Those are things that have a physical aspect to them. So they're very part of our 3D world in the sense of collective and touching. So they're part of absolutely everything. When you're a kid, you learn not to touch a hot pot because it's going to burn you. And we learn to respect the different elements in different ways. Without water, you die, you don't have plants. Etc. Etc. Volcanoes are a very big part of creating, you know, island and soil that are very fertile. And not only that, but when you think about Egypt and the Nile, when the Nile would grow, it would leave sediments behind, which would be where people would grow their food. So you have that ecosystem around the elements. And for us to connect with the elements is important because it reminds us what is around us and how to connect the planet because everything comes from the sun. You know, you, you look here, so we have the sun and the heat that's making water evaporate, that's making clouds, that's making water everywhere. And you have the stone and we're in Canada, the Canadian sheep that is created by friction and all the things, then you have nature around. So all the elements work together to actually build an ecosystem. And it's constant and it doesn't stop. And unless you have a an outside thing that come, it keeps moving, you know. When you think about an ice edge, that's one of the rare times when things are going to slow down a lot. Outside of that, those elements keep being in motion and they keep interacting with one another. So there's also a fifth element that we often forget about. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. So 
we often speak about the four elements. And when you talk about spirituality, I like to think of a fifth one, which is the Isser. Now, the Isser is everything else. It's the substance of what we would call the magical realm of everything. And when you think about your light, you know, what element is it made of? Well, it's part of the ether, it's part of the infinite, you know. So it's, a, it's an element that covers everything else. And because it's not a material experience like the other four, you know, I call it a fifth element, but it's not a physical experience. Yet I do feel we need something at that level because we exist and I'm speaking right now. And that is a physical experience. That, that is very tricky for me to express myself. So there has to be something else. And this is where, you know, I think about the Easter as being the fifth element, the light, you know, which is not the sun. Yeah, that makes sense. So what do you find most interesting about water? Water has many, many properties. What I find the most interesting about it is that it is foreign to Earth. Most likely, based on all the research that exists, water did not originate from Earth, but came from space. And ran down on the planet in meteor and in many different fashions. But Earth does not react like any other element we find on the planet. It is abnormal and a lot of research would think that it is extraterrestrial in that sense. So to me, water is already super interesting just on the science aspect of it. Then there is its healing properties, you know. If you don't drink enough water, you're going to be sick. So you need water, your body needs it constantly. You can have a lot of different food. You can change your diet in many, many ways. And you can reduce how much you eat. But water is a necessity, it's one of the absolute for us. So water brings us a lot of things, a lot of life, and it allows us to do many things, you know, when, when we ground, when we connect, when we do many things. We often think about grounding with being in earth, you know, with putting roots and going there. Well, I like to think about it this way. The water that we're in right now, that connects to another river, which connects to a bigger one, which connects uh, to the Rideau River, and then at some point this connects to the Saint Laurent, that goes to the ocean. So literally the water right there is connected to the Amazonian forest, if you trust it far enough. So it's being in water grounded? Yes. If you can connect to the water and to the fact that it's in everywhere, you can actually connect as much in the water as you connect on the earth. Okay. The big caveat I like to put, it needs to be running water. Okay. Because running water is connected to the system. If you are on an enclosed lake, you can still do it because the lake is connected to the earth, but it's not a pure water connection to all the water systems. And what do you do to connect with water? I would say, just like for Earth, you can put your, your feet in it and, you know, close your eyes, eyes open, but whatever feels right, and try to feel where the water comes from. Like, listen to the story of the water. Like, we don't really think about the water as a living organism itself, but we know trees are living organisms. Yeah. We know they have new story, history, children, that they grow. We know that they communicate with one another. There is very interesting study on that. Well, think of the water and, uh, as another family member, you know, that knows, that has seen. So just, where are you coming from? Where, where are you sending me? Where are you driving me? All these things, you know, and it's a good way to connect with yourself and to connect with nature. So one thing that I find interesting is that Moto studies said that consciousness can affect the molecular structure of water. So, what are your thoughts on that? So, we know that when you test upon music to plants, and when they're in bigger pots, it's more soil or connected to the ground, they do better. There is plenty of study on that. We don't quite understand the full mechanism of how the plants react to us, and if it reacts to vibration, to impact, there is a lot. But we know there is a reaction. Now, 
the question becomes where does that fact happen with human beings, you know? And sometimes you can see someone, you know, like that person is angry and you can sense because you know that person and they're just vibing and you're like, mm, something is there and you go and you're like, are you okay? And the person is like, yeah, 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 it's gonna be fine, it's gonna be fine. So we have that sense motive that exists. And we project it all the time and we receive it all the time. The question becomes, why wouldn't water, which carries molecules and particles and connect everything, have that capacity to, to like, have an imprint of the emotion? You know, just like a plant would. And to change and conform. And to change is what it needs. If you think of it, water already does that when it's cold. The ice is going to try to form into the shape if it's in the bottom. It's not going to change shape. So if you think about the entire concept of, you know, pushing an intent, well, the things around you will conform to that. Someone that is depressed, sadly, they won't see the happy things around them. They will see them through their own lens, which at the time is a negative one. And that's why it's hard to get out of depression on your own when you're too far deep. Because your own brain is playing against you, and you have to change the pattern. And it's not easy. But it's that concept of lenses. So as you change the lens, you start to see things better and better. And we impact our surrounding. You take the same surrounding, you put someone that's super happy and someone super depressed, one of them is gonna say I don't like this, and one of them is gonna say this is awesome. And it's just about the concept. Uh, that's a sentence that I love, but you're gonna see, you know, adult crying in the Ferrari. When you look from the outside, they have all the money, they have all the cars, they have everything, but they're miserable. They're empty inside, and they just cry in their Ferrari. So when you think about that, you know, it's really about the context. And when you think about the context, why couldn't water have a context with what's around it? Just like our ecosystem is. So I know that you make like sacred geometry shapes and I've seen uh, water jugs or vessels with like a flower of light underneath it and it says it provides structure to the water. How does that work? So when you think about the golden ratio, which is what we're talking about, so sacred geometry is derived from the golden ratio, which appears in nature. Mathematics is one of the ways the universe talks to us. Mathematics is a universal language. And when you think about it that way, when you see it in flowers, the way the petals are organized. Some people may know it as the Fibonacci sequence. When you look at these things, and you see nature basically using mass, and you can find it after, you know, in space, in the galaxy, and all of that, you start to question, okay, how come mass is that language, and how does it impact? We know very well that if you do a piece of art, the website, a building that respects the golden ratio, it is a lot more pleasant to the human eye. That is a fact that has been studied. So the question becomes, if this impact us internally, because our brain is wired a certain way to react to that number, and you expose water to that number in a physical shape, then why wouldn't the water react to it? Just like it's gonna mold to a bottle, this is mass. Do we know exactly why it happens? No, we don't. So I can't give you the why, but to me, it's not something I would dismiss. There is too many things around the golden ratio, around sacred geometry, that goes up. So the last question is, can you clean crystals and stones using water? So, when you think about a stone and keeping something in it, which you can link in your program, there is many ways to speak about it. You have to think about it as a piece of paper. It is the medium you are writing on. Then, when you think about a piece of paper, if you just put it in water and take it out of the water, it's gonna smudge everything everywhere. But the page is not gonna be clean, assuming the paper can survive the water. But if you put it under running water, it's gonna slowly take all the ink out and run with it and dissipate it. Why is the same thing? You know, putting them in non-running water, I don't find really helps. So you want them in running water, you know, maybe you put them in a glass and you run the water and it flows. That's going to help a lot. But just like a piece of paper, it should also depend on the pen that was put on it. You know, it's a regular pen, the ink is going to wash off. If it's a stronger pen that's water resistant, 
and then that's not going to add. So it really depends on the content for that. So that's it for today. I honestly feel so relaxed just sitting here in nature and hearing the water flow around me. So I can definitely attest that water is powerful and you can feel the energy around it. Water is good. <laughs> no, but it's as simple as that. Water is good. Water is life. <laughs> And if you're lucky enough to have a tub and you take a bath, try to open the, the, the bottom part a tiny bit to have the water run and just have a tiny bit of water kicking in. You may find that's going to be quite interesting. And on that, see you next time. Bye.